Welcome to the Team Lava Design Day presentation. We are the 2021 NASA RASCAL finalists for the Distributed Lunar Sample Aggregation Analysis and Return to ISS theme. This theme requires us to develop an infrastructure for repeatedly collecting lunar samples from different areas of interest on the Moon. We quickly identified lunar lava tubes because they have been unexplored and they preserve samples well. As we began brainstorming ideas, lunar conditions were quickly identified as a significant constraint because of the sharp regolith, radiation, and temperature concerns, especially during a lunar night. These conditions put limitations on how and when we can access these lava tubes via their skylight to collect samples. In terms of the mission requirements, repeatability was a primary constraint. Many space missions are one-offs, so this constraint guided both our con-ops and vehicle design. To meet these constraints, we designed a mission that will use an assembly of three vehicles, each designed with a specific task in mind. The Lunar Acquisition Vehicle and Analysis, or LAVA, is a repeatable sample return mission that uses multiple spacecraft to explore the lunar lava tubes. Our mission utilizes two SpaceX Falcon rockets to individually launch an orbiter and a lander into geostationary transfer orbit, where they will rendezvous before traveling to low lunar orbit. Once LLO insertion is complete, the orbiter will collect surface data to ensure a safe landing site. On the surface of the moon, the rover will then exit the lander, attached by both a zipline and a powered tether. The rover will deploy a mass containing a black box system to control the pulleys for the zipline and tether. The rover will then traverse the lunar surface towards a desirable deployment secant line. Once there, the dual axle will drill anchors into the ground. The dual axle will support the zipline while the powered tether will be retracted by a spool in the lander to direct the axle above and into the pit. Once in the tube, the axle will collect APXS data as it descends towards the cave floor. At the bottom, several physical samples as well as additional scientific data will be collected. The samples will be stored within the wheel of the axle in a revolving cylinder with easy access for later removal. Once the sample storage has been filled, the tether will be retracted, the axle will return to the dew axle, and the rover will travel back to the lander. The lander will then ascend to LLO and rendezvous with the orbiter. The orbiter will then detach from the lander and return the samples to the ISS before refueling and returning for further sample collections. In order to access these lava tubes, we decided to utilize a tethered rover and design the other two vehicles to deliver this payload. These vehicles were optimized to minimize any risks associated with this goal. We then designed a proof of concept prototype to demonstrate the most critical component of this mission, the zipline operation. Although the JPL dual axle rover design is ingenious, it has not been given the opportunity to be a part of a full scale mission. We believe that this rover is perfect for our mission because the risk of tearing the tether on the sharp lunar regolith has been eliminated. The lunar lander for our mission has been designed around housing the dual axle and the various other subsystems. This vehicle will be responsible for deploying the rover, returning the collected samples to lunar orbit, and finally forming one end of the zipline assembly. The final vehicle in this fleet is the orbiter. This vehicle will deliver the samples to the ISS as well as refuel the lander in lunar orbit. The fairings for the initial launch of both vehicles as well as the utilized docking mechanism for between of the vehicles as well as the orbiter and the ISS has also been shown. Here is a table with our mass budgets that breaks down the mass of each vehicle subsystem designed to fit within the Falcon payload. Both the orbiter and lander use the efficient XLR-132 engine, which uses N2O4 oxidizer and MMH fuel. The repellent tanks used are carbon fiber composite overwrap pressure vessels, which were chosen because of their high strength and low weight. The computer subsystem features a modular architecture, at the heart of which are two BAE RAD5545 system on chip processors. This subsystem interfaces closely with the communication subsystem, which has X-band and UHF to transmit the data budget shown below. The thermal subsystem features both active and passive controls to manage temperature. These controls include radiators, insulators, heaters, RHUs, and coolers integrated into a warm electronics box. The structure subsystem consists of a combination of heritage as well as cutting edge material and hardware that keep the system efficient as well as low risk. Here is a list of the instruments that are to be included on the rover, lander, and orbiter. Extensive trade studies were performed to ensure that they provide the most scientific value to the mission. The GNC subsystem uses an ADCS to interface with the control moment gyros and thrusters for actuation. The power subsystem uses solar power and batteries to drive the point of load converters that power the electronics. This general diagram shows how the computer system interfaces with the instruments, propulsion, and control system along with the other electronics. The mission is constrained that we need to land within 100 meters of the skylight. To achieve this, we will use a method where we compare points on the ground from images in LiDAR to reference images from orbit. This strategy was also used by the OSIRIS-REx mission, Perseverance rover, and the ALHAP project. 
The goal of our prototype is to allow for vertical and horizontal translation of a payload across an opening. On the moon, this process will occur over the skylight of a lunar lava tube, but our prototype will be tested over the dry riverbed of the Rieto River. The prototype consists of four subsystems, the first of which is a modular box shell that houses all other components and whose panels may be removed for construction as well as visibility of the interior components. The other subsystems that compose our prototype consist of the zipline, clamp, and tether subassemblies. The zipline subassembly consists of the commercial off-the-shell powered trolley and the 3 16th steel cable. The clamp subassembly is composed of the linear actuators and their required components such as the control system and the battery and allows the trolley to be fixed in place and the payload to be held at a constant height. Finally, the tether subassembly consists of the rollers to guide the tether from the attachment point down to the payload, the 3 16th building wire, and finally the rover simulator. This architecture diagram shows how all of the components of each of our subsystems interface with each other. This image is of all the interior components of our prototype, which shows the physical realization of our architecture diagram. One concern for the system is the sway of the rover while on the zipline. By modeling it as a damp pendulum, we found that the sway diminished over time, reducing the risk on the rover. It is important both for the mission and for testing that we minimize the sag in the cable. This analysis was done by superimposing the weight of the zipline along with that of the hanging mass. These diagrams show the effect of cable tension and length on sag. As is shown, we can expect a very minimal sag of less than half a meter when we test here on Earth. Because of the load that the top panel of the zipper will undergo, it's important to find its load limit. For this reason, the simulation software ANSYS was used to create the maximum displacement and stress that will be created from the 20 pound load distributed between the two L bracket connections. Shown here on the right, the maximum displacement was found to be 0.43 millimeters and the max stress was 609 psi. Because the linear actuators can provide 110 pounds of force, it's crucial that the passive clamp can accommodate this load. To ensure that these PLA blocks will perform, this load was simulated in ANSYS, resulting in a maximum displacement of 0.05 millimeters and a max stress of 306 psi. This is well within the tensile strength of the PLA material, which is about 9,000 psi. To properly test the zipper design, this zipline setup was constructed at the Rieto River. A hanging scale was used to measure tension in the line, which was controlled using a mechanical winch. The zipline had minimal sag of less than an inch. It became very clear that the power trolley has precise movement and can accelerate quickly to various speeds via remote control and uses self-braking to stop on a dock. One test was performed with a 7.5 pound hanging mass. The mass was hung at an exaggerated distance and was loaded off-center to further test off nominal scenarios. Despite these challenges, the trolley was able to operate normally with the same performance. However, with a 12 and a half pound payload, the driver tire did not have a sufficient normal force to be able to grip the zipline. Thus, the trolley was unable to drive properly and got stuck along the zipline. This imposes a limit on our prototype weight, but the favorable gravity on the moon will help this effect in the actual mission. While testing, we also wanted to verify the results of tip and sway that were done in the modeling analysis section. To give the water bottle disturbance, we displaced it horizontally and then rapidly accelerated and decelerated to give it axial displacement as well. Despite all these disturbances, the trolley subsystem performed exactly as expected. We were able to rapidly accelerate and decelerate and still had very good precision. We also tested the clamping subsystem on a unit level. As is shown here, the clamp subsystem operated exactly as we expected it to. The tether was indeed clamped, there was good rod alignment, and the plastic did not deform at all. Before the Q&A session, we expect to complete construction of the box shell and perform final testing of the zipper prototype to fully demonstrate the feasibility of our mission. Ultimately, our creative mission to collect pristine, untouched samples from the lunar lava tubes fulfills the NASA RASCAL challenge by leveraging existing space technology in an innovative way. Thank you.